Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. So we're off to a service call today, and uh, let's see here. I'm gonna actually pull up the service call. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Whew. I didn't. I had breakfast this morning. I kind of. I left my house a little later, a little later than usual. A little bit, actually. I left like around six or seven. Follow the course of the road. Oh, there we go. Else. Follow the course of the road. Uh, I'm trying to turn this off for a second. Yeah, we went there. We go. Um. So, just go about the GPS real quick. Make sure. All right, we're good. Okay, I'm just making sure that I don't go. Yep. So I got this pretty cool commercial app for commercial vehicles. Um, let me just actually pull it up. I want to make sure it's called Hammer. Uh, it's mainly for truck drivers, commercial truck drivers, tractor trailers. Um, but I use it now for, well, this is a commercial vehicle that I drive. So, there are a lot of highways, parkways, um, expressways, uh, in New York City as well. So, there's certain, uh, certain restrictions to that so I'm on the West Side Highway for uh, in Manhattan right now now for highways for commercial vehicles I, that I'm driving or any type of commercial vehicle um, are allowed to drive it uh, EFDR drive there are no commercial vehicles allowed there safety camera ahead safety camera ahead um, there are no I like this app that it tells you where the safety cameras are. Um, parkways you can't we can't drive in. Commercial vehicles are not allowed. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, I think that's that's basically it. So the West Side Highway turns into the Henry Hudson Parkway. So I have to get off uh, on a certain block. I think on West 56. I have to exit off the West 56 to exit. And then take local streets, which it's actually doing right now. It's leading me to that point. Um, oh, wait, I didn't even pull up the service call. Sorry, guys. Let me just do that now. Oh, uh, uh, not behind me. <laughs> oh, crud. Thank you for the uh, Let me just stop at this light right now. We... All right. This iPad is... I'm still trying to get used to this iPad. I'm not an Apple guy. I'm more of an Android type of guy. But it is what it is. It's not my iPad. I don't own it. It's the company's iPad. So we're doing service tickets and service calls with this software on the iPad. Um, let's see what we got here. Today we are doing a time and material job. And basically, on the notes, we're replacing some switches, some dimmers. Apparently, this client has. Let's see. Yeah, well, this customer is having trouble with one of the dimmers. Bulbs are flickering. Um, or could it be possible that the, um, the it's the wrong type of dimmer? Apparently, they need a. Actually, they, it's been the notes here tell me that the last uh, electrician that was there that works for us uh, he says that one of the lights requires a low voltage magnetic um, dimmer, which I may have in the back of the van. I might have it from a previous customer from yesterday who also had the same, not yesterday, I think two days ago, I had the same issue. Where he had a magnetic um, low voltage dimmer, and it basically was uh, his LED bulbs were flickering, and it was shutting him, it was shutting off. Times it would turn it on, it wouldn't turn on. Times it would turn on on its own. So, um, yeah. And here's the thing: uh, I want to, I want actually want to keep those of you in mind, especially general contractors out there um, it's a common mistake uh, and homeowners and renters sorry if the camera's shaky <laughs> camera ahead. 
Um, when it comes to selecting dimmer or dimmer switches, meaning there's a toggle and a dimmer com com combo set, and you're switching over to LEDs, or yeah, in that, in that is, let's say you're switching over to LEDs, right? You want to keep an eye out on the type of dimmer you want for that bulb. We've had a lot of calls where I've been in a lot of calls, a lot of customers' homes, where simply enough that they just don't, they'll just get any dimmer and assume it'll work for the bulb that they got. Frankly, that's not the case anymore. Back then in the day, the dimmers, back then they were the dial dimmers or the sliding, uh, the sliders. Um, back then, yeah, it was just an incandescent bulb or halogen bulb. And, um, and, and some fluorescent bulbs could dim. But back in the day, it was an incandescent halogen type bulbs. Where the dimmer would just work on those type of bulbs. That's what they were designed for. Now that the technology has... Technology has been increasing, and LEDs have become even more and more on demand and more popular these days. There is a demand where now manufacturers have to design different types of dimmers, especially in different applications, whether you have um, low voltage LEDs, like 24 to 12 volt to 24 volt, which requires a dimmer converter or dimmer driver, which basically is like a transformer, but it's also dimmable, where you also now have to look and say, okay, what does what does this transformer or this system require? Type what type of dimmer does it require? So you go either low voltage type, magnetic low voltage, or if the mag or if the uh, the transformer just requires you to just get a dimmable uh, transformer specifying only LEDs only and it's a not and it, it, it doesn't require you get like a low voltage magnetic transformer which most of the case it does um, yes purchase that you have to really look at the specs and the demands of the type of bulb you use or the type of system you're using or installing okay for instance now for homeowners or general contractors, if you're having guys or one of your own guys installing light fixtures that are just strictly LEDs, um, and the customer wants to put dimmers, before even going about purchasing the fixture, just don't buy a typical LED fixture and then assume it's dimmable. Some are not. Okay, so it's always good to look at the specs. Find out in the spec sheets or on the on the product that if it's a dimmable type of fixture, light fixture, what um, what type of voltage does it require? Is it a 120 or a 110, 115, 120? Well, or if it's a one, if it's a 12 volt and requires a low voltage dimmer, 120 to to, to um, low voltage. So basically have like a low voltage um, transformer or a type of rectifier that you know will change into 24 or 12 volts um, 12 volts um, you have to look at these things especially when if you're just putting a regular light fixture and the client wants to put in LED bulbs and wants to put a dimmer make sure when purchasing or if the con if, if the customer is purchasing the bulbs themselves make sure let them know, hey listen, if I'm going to put a dimmer in here, this dimmer is going to be specifically only for LED bulbs. Make sure you get an LED bulb that is dimmable, okay, and it's compatible with this dimmer. A lot of times, customers will call, I show up, and their lights are flickering like crazy. And that's because they put in, they'll have the correct dimmer. Or that will because clearly say for LEDs. But the, the only thing but the problem would be is if now is the bulb a dimmable type LED bulb? And ha and majority of the time I get a ladder, I get up there in the light fixture, I unscrew the, the globe or the glass shade, 
and usually um, the bulb is non-dimmable. It's non-dimmable bulb. And you know, the customer will, uh, I've had customers argue, some, a few of them, very few, but one or two argue with me, say, well, it was working and it's now burning out. How could that be? How did I, like, how is it non-dimmable when it strictly says on a dimmer is LED? Well, you have to read the product, what you buy, okay? If the LED bulb states not, not dimmable, or not compatible with dimmers, it's not compatible with dimmers. You're just going to have to have an on and off switch. That's it. Now, the dimmable type bulbs are more, a little more expensive than the regular non-dimmable. So you're going to pay a little extra for it if you are looking towards yeah, if you're looking towards more like, you know, you want something that can dip, like a bulb that can dip. So you're going to have to pay a little, a couple of cents to maybe a couple, a couple, one or two dollars more extra. Okay. Um, try not to argue with an electrician when he tells you that. Um, it's clear, if it clearly states the bulb says not dimmable, but you said, hey, I've had it in there for a month, six months now. Why did it work then? Well, here it is. Yes, it will work at times. At times, you may not notice that you'll turn it on, you leave the room once in a while, and the bulb will flicker and then stay steady. Or, you leave it on at the highest point on your dimmer, it stays on, and then when you try to dim it down, it'll dim and then it'll start blinking. It'll flicker and then it'll shut off completely. And then you don't have that dimming effect that you want. You know, you start calling, you're complaining, say, wait, you know, this dimmer is this dimmer is not working. Or, you know, I don't know why it's not dimming the bulb to the lowest point where I want to see that slight dim. Or it's not shutting off all the way. It's constantly going to the lowest dim point and then it'll start flickering. Don't argue with the factor of that you've gotten the bulb. Sure, it may work for six months and then you start noticing these things. That's because you just started noticing. You just never really took the time to really test out your dimmer with that bulb. You just put it in there, put it at the highest point, and the thought, hey, whatever, and then a couple months later, you decide to dim down the bulb, light it a little bit, and it starts flickering. The bulb is not compatible with a dimmer, clearly. Even though it does work, and you'll still get that flickering effect, okay? you'll have those weird, strange um, points where it dims, it stays blinking, then you, you know, point is, check, check your bulbs. Check the bulbs that you purchase. Are they dimmable? Okay. Now, also, make sure if you have a dimmer, if you have a dimming system, a system that, that dims at 12 volts or 24 volts, and you're buying a bulb that is 120 volt bulb, and it's not working clearly your your fixtures are designed because they do have um, I've seen it before they do have a a19 type Edison screw bulbs where it works on low voltage and these type of bulbs specifically work for vol low voltage systems um, if you put it in and expect it to like work you have to read the you have to read what the bulb says if it's 12 volts only, 12 volts only, that's for that system. If you're putting longer 20 volts, it's not going to work. You're just, it's, it's just clearly going to sit there and like not turn on. Um, listen, don't fight about it. You brought the wrong product. Go back to your research. Make sure whatever electrical system you have or whatever lighting system you have, it looks all fancy schmancy looking. Make sure there's no drivers, there's no transformers. Make sure it's not a 12 volt before you put it in. And if it is, get a 12 volt bulb that is compatible with that system. Plain and simple. It's not it's not really rocket science, <laughs> to be honest. With you. So um, for you guys out there, contractors especially, make sure you get the right product. After um, three quarters of a mile, keep right. Make sure whatever light fixture you're getting, if it's an Edison based light fixture and the customer wants um, you know dimmers, make sure that fixture the bulb that you get for that fixture are dimmable or compatible. Get the right dimmer.
okay, get an LED dimmer. Get You can get a CL dimmer, a Lutron CL dimmer, and it does halogen, incandescent, LEDs, and compact for, uh, fluorescent bulbs as well. You can get that. I, I call those universal dimmers. Don't ask me why. If it does if it does compact fluorescent, LED, incandescent halogen, all in one, you're good. You can put any type of bulb in there, as long as it's a dimmable type bulb. Not just throw in an LED, a non-LED bulb, and, and assume it's gonna it's gonna dim. No, don't throw in a compact fluorescent. Compact fluorescent, one of the little spiral bulbs. Way way before LED bulbs started coming out, they we used compact fluorescents as a substitute for incandescent bulbs because they saved us a little bit more of energy consumption. Uh, they do make the fluorescent compact bulbs, a spiral, or I call them spiral bulbs, uh, dimmable as well. Make sure it's dimmable. All right, if the customer prefers a spiral bulb, whatever, give it to them, but make sure that bulb is dimmable, okay? Um, if you're getting a, a LED fixture that is that doesn't need to be changed out, um, and it's strictly just LED, make sure that LED is a dimmable type LED, okay? Make sure that L, the dimmer is compatible with that LED fixture, okay? Make sure it's not an incandescent. Incandescent halogen dimmers, the typical, those typical dimmers back in the day, they don't work with LEDs. Believe it or not, you're going to get a lot of buzzing sound. You're going to, and, and the reason for that, it may not, you, you may not burn the bulb. You're most likely going to burn out the dimmer. Okay, you're going to hear a buzzing or like a buzzing, screeching sound. That means that dimmer is trying to struggle to try to step up the the, the voltage and lower the voltage, but it's not, it, it's it's just not going, getting through past the bulb. It's just it's just fighting. It's fighting the new technology that's in there. And it's not designed for that. Okay? So make sure whatever fixture you get, if it's an LED fixture, if it's a fluorescent fixture. Now here's another thing about fluorescent fixtures. The fluorescent tube, the F9, F12s, T8s, T12s, um, fluorescent tube bulbs. Now they do make LED or, I'm sorry, they do make, yeah, they do make LED retrofits. You can get them, and you can install them yourself at home. Uh, they're really easy to install. Or just contact an electri electrical contractor. And uh, they do have dimmable ballasts as well. If you if you want to stick with your fluorescent tube ballast uh, type bulb fixtures, you can actually purchase a fluorescent ballast substitute that also does, that's also dimmable replace it and if the bulbs are able to dim as well that's fine uh, make sure you get a, uh, a dimmer that's specifically designed for fluorescent bulbs do not install an incandescent halogen type for a fluorescent fixture it works you're gonna get a lot of blinking you're gonna get all kinds of weird crap weird shit going on uh, make sure you get a, uh, a CL you can get a CL uh, Lutron dimmer because it does uh, complex fluorescent bulbs and that is still considered a fluorescent tube bulb or just mainly just get a for um, a dimmer that does specific um, specifically for fluorescent fixtures fluorescent, uh, fluorescent bulbs okay um, feet keep right. these, are, these are the common mistakes I run into all the time when I go to customer house so I'm my, my guess now, I'm on my way to the, con the customer's home. It's already almost 9 o'clock. I should be there by now. I, I ran into a lot of traffic. Um, I gotta stay to my right here. Okay. Yeah, 59th Street. So, 59th Street is basically the exit. Exit 8, 59th Street. That's like the last exit. Any commercial vehicles are in, um, need to get off that exit because they're not allowed. To, it, the West Side Highway after 59th Street becomes. Um, the Henry Hudson Parkway, so commercial vehicles aren't allowed. That's your I'm uh, Henry Hudson, so I gotta get off here. But anyways, um, let's see how far are we? Wow, I'm still with ways up. What? Yeah, I'm gonna definitely be late. I, I ran into traffic. It's, it's ridiculous. But anyways, um, yeah, that's my that's my tip for today on this video. I didn't mention it was gonna be a tip for the day, but um, yeah, make sure you guys are getting the right. Stuff, right products um, way too many times like the customer will get something wrong they end up calling us and it charges them more for our service than it is to actually you know 
when it is when they first bought their equipment. So, if you want to save a little money, there's my tip for you. Make sure your bulbs, your light fixtures, your dimmers are compatible with each other. If not, you're, you're going to get that end result where you're going to get the flickering, you're going to get the burnouts, and then you're going to have to call an electrician to come by and <laughs> fix the issue for you. So, um, yeah. So, guys. Ahead. So, anyways, guys, uh, appreciate the the support. Thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, smash the like button. Also, don't forget um, if you like to, you know, feet, turn right. don't, <laughs> this is this GPS. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you like the content, um, and also leave a comment. If you have any questions, or if you want, if you have any experiences of that, and you have any questions about dimmers and LED bulbs and so and so forth, let me know um, in the comments section down below. I'll help you out. Now turn left and then take the second right. I'll help you out. You know, I, I'm be more than happy to help you out and find the uh, your the system that you want to work After with. After 500 um, feet, turn right. Yeah. So. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.